This is Dr. Christoph Fuchs. He is a professor and the division head of neonatology in the Department of Pediatrics. He recently delivered our seminar that asked the question, how to avoid postnatal growth retardation in preterm infants surviving neonatal intensive care. Now before we delve into this question, we must first define what postnatal and preterm infants are. Postnatal, simply put, means the period after birth. And preterm infants are those born more than three weeks before the due date. So how did Dr. Fuchs really answer this question? The first question he asked was, what does an ideal growth pattern look like? In other words, do we know how a baby should grow given certain information? Should a baby follow a certain sequence of events from prenatal to postnatal and so on? Then he asked, what were the best nutritional strategies that optimized growth? In other words, do we know for sure that feeding a burger to an infant is detrimental? Feeding a banana is better for an infant's health and feeding baby food is the best possibility. Do we really know this? Let us step back for a moment to the question, what does ideal growth look like? What does proper postnatal growth look like for preterm infants? Well, like I've said before, ideal growth for preterm infants could be represented by any sort of pattern. We just don't know. It could be this infant, this infant, this infant, and so on. But the fact of the matter is, we just do not know. Well, let's say that we do have a preterm infant, and we have some accurate way of determining that it will, in fact, become a big baby. Well, hold on, wrong big baby. Let us try that one more time. Let's say we have a preterm infant, and we know that it will become either a fat or a lean infant. Well, we have a lot of information that can help us optimize the growth of the infant. Because if we can predict that a preterm baby will become fat or lean, well, we know which nutritional strategies will be optimal for a fat baby, and we also know which ones will be optimal for a lean baby. Therefore, we are able to optimize their growth pattern depending upon our prediction. The problem is actually that we need to develop a model that helps us to accurately predict whether an infant will become fat or lean. This was a corollary of Dr. Fuchs' seminar presentation because he said that this will allow us to subsequently control their diet and as a consequence, optimize their growth. However, there is one aspect of this seminar which my group and I thought we should simplify or demystify. And that aspect is this. Yeah, I know what's going on in your head right now. You're like, what the heck is this? What are these weird symbols? What does VLBW mean? What are these graphs trying to tell me? What is WLAN laptop-based program? I was in the same position as you as I listened to Dr. Fuchs. However, I'm here to help you understand how simple this graph is. So let us begin. Let us demystify this graph. The previous graph was taken from a study published in Clinical Nutrition called A Nutritional Program to Improve Outcome of Very Low Birth Weight VLBW Infants. Let us first describe what their problem was and what their suggested solution was. Their main problem was that very low birth weight infants do not grow properly. And their solution was quite simple. They wanted to take the very low birth weight infants and develop a nutritional strategy that equated to them growing properly. But how did they do this? Well, first they took 123 very low birth weight infants. And yes, that is exactly 123. I counted each and every single one of them. They fed them more carbohydrates, protein, and fat. And they kept on increasing their feeding every single day, again and again by 20 milliliters per kilogram per day until they reached a maximum value of 160 milliliters per kilogram per day. Therefore, these 123 babies were fed more carbohydrates, protein, and fat per day and also per feeding. 
Then what they did was they found 115 similar infants from their databases and they served as historical controls because they were on the old diet. And they took the current infants who were on the new diet and they compared it with the historical controls. And through the comparison, they did some statistical analysis and got three pieces of information. Let us for one moment go back to the scary graph we initially saw. They got these three pieces of information, body weight, body length, and head circumference. They used these three pieces of information as a measure for optimal growth. They compared the historical, the retrospective, and the current prospective populations of infants on the basis of this information. And what did they really find? Firstly, they found a 10% increase in body weight, about 200 grams heavier, and also a 1.8 centimeter increase in body length. Furthermore, they also found a 1.6 centimeter increase in head circumference. Let us go back to the graph one more time. This is what this graph shows a significant increase in body weight, body length, and head circumference between the two populations of infants. But what does this mean? Well, there are two things they suggested in their study. The first, as a result of their increased body weight and body length, the infants are healthier because they are normally gaining the weight they lost as a consequence of them being preterm compared to term babies. So that's a check. Secondly, the increase in head circumference shows that there is more room for neuron development and thus better cognitive development. So that's a check as well. So what did we learn? Well, the researchers in the study were looking at very low birth weight infants. And they wanted to develop a nutritional strategy that made these very low birth weight infants develop appropriately and properly. And in fact, they did develop an effective strategy. So if we go back to the scary graph, we know what this means. We have developed a nutritional strategy that works. Therefore, we have demystified this. Oof. That was a lot of hard work. But I'm glad you were here every step of the way. I hope you enjoy the journey as much as I did as we demystified that scary graph. As a German proverb says, Entfangen es leicht, beharren eine Kunst. To begin is easy, to persist is an art.